Hi everybody, welcome to your first lesson in your new unit. Today we're talking about atoms, which is the smallest possible unit to divide matter into, um, where it's still maintaining its properties, okay? So throughout this unit, you're gonna hear me compare atoms and elements to fruit, okay? Um, so when I say um, an element, I'm gonna say like an orange, and an atom is a piece of that orange that still is an orange. It still has the same properties of an orange. It's just in a piece, okay? So the element is the fruit or the fruit name, and the atom is the piece of that fruit, okay? So again, an atom is the smallest thing that I can break it down to where all of the properties within it are still that of the original element, okay? So atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and we're going to talk about all three of these things in this lesson. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the nucleus. The nucleus is the center of an atom. Now, you might have heard of the term nucleus when we talked about our biology unit in terms of cells, okay? But nucleus really just means the center of something. And in this case, we're talking about the center of an atom, not of the center of a cell, but um, in matter, we're talking about atoms. So the nucleus is the part of the atom that's in the center, and the protons and the neutrons are found in the nucleus. We're gonna start first by talking about protons. Protons are things that are positively charged. So if you see here, we've got it pointing, the proton is here. These red ones in this diagram are the ones that are positively charged, okay? Every proton has a mass of one AMU, one atomic mass unit, which by the way is the same thing as a neutron, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The number does not change from atom to atom, okay? So every oxygen atom is gonna have the same amount of protons. Every helium atom is gonna have the same amount of protons. Every gold atom will have the same amount of protons. It does not change from atom to atom, okay? Now, typically, you'll see that the number of protons that you have in an atom will be equal to the number of electrons that we have in an atom. Again, we'll talk about that here in a minute when we get to electrons. But the number of protons will always determine the element's atomic number. When we get to the periodic table, you'll learn a lot more about atomic numbers. But always remember that the atomic number on the periodic table is how many protons the element or the atoms of that element will have. All right, now let's talk about neutrons. So neutrons are also in the nucleus, but they have no charge, okay? They are neutral. So remember, N-E-U, neutron, neutral. That does not mean it's negative. It means it's neutral, not positive, not negative, neutral. Neutrons also have a mass of one atomic mass unit, which is the same as the proton, okay? This number can be different from atom to atom, so um, we could be on the lookout from that, for that. And then we'll talk about electrons. Electrons are those negatively charged particles that are orbiting, we know what this means from our space unit, orbiting around the nucleus. They don't stay in the same place. They're constantly swirling around, orbiting around that nucleus. Now the mass of an electron is very insignificant. In fact, it's so close to zero that we don't count it, okay? So the number of electrons can change, um, but typically the number of protons equals the number of electrons, okay? This is what's usual. Now, <clears throat> the number and the arrangement of these electrons determines the chemical properties of an atom. What this means is the electrons that are here on the rings are going to be the parts of the atom that try to connect themselves with other atoms, okay? Uh, we learn about valence electrons, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute, but they're the ones that are going to try to react with other atoms and determine their chemical properties. So like I said, the electrons are the ones that are involved in bonding, how reactive or unreactive a, um, an element might be or an atom might be. They determine the 
chemical properties of an atom. So as we've said, the electrons are floating around the nucleus and they float on rings outside the nucleus. Remember, inside the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons and electrons are on the rings outside. Well, for every um, electron has to be on a ring. Now, the center ring here that's closest to the nucleus, only two electrons can fit on that ring. Other, uh, any more than that and it's too full. So another ring forms. This second ring can fit up to eight electrons. And too much after that, a third ring comes. And now we've got eight can fit on this ring. Now this applies to only the first 18 elements, but that's what we need to know for eighth grade star. So as we remember, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So for example, if I have 10 protons, I'm gonna need 10 electrons. And of those 10, only two can fit on the center ring. And then the um, second ring will fit the last eight electrons, okay? Um, so the electrons that are on the outermost ring of that atom are called valence electrons. Valence electrons, I want you to remember V for Velcro. They're the ones that are gonna try to Velcro themselves to other atoms, okay? So let's do a quick check. The lightest subatomic particle, hopefully you remember that that's an electron. It has such little mass that we don't even count it. It's so close to zero that we don't count it when we're talking about mass. So electron would be the lightest. And the two things that are found in the nucleus, hopefully you remember that those are protons and neutrons. And the electrons are on those rings outside the nucleus. All right, so there's many different ways. I'm gonna move my picture here. There's many different ways to draw an atom. You might see them in any of these kinds of forms. You can draw it in just simple rings like circles, or you can draw those circles all swirly, kind of showing that they're orbiting around in different ways. Um, either one of these demonstrations or drawings would be correct, okay? And at first, they thought that the atom was a solid ball. So now that we know all this, we can make our drawings a little bit more specific. Let's take a look at um, an atom and how it relates to that element, okay? So we're looking here at helium. We see that helium has an atomic number of two. Remember you guys, we said that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So we should have two protons, two positively charged things in the center. One, two, hey look, we do. There should be two, okay? We also said that if there's, um, that the um, number of protons should equal the number of electrons. <clears throat> and if the protons are two, then the electrons should be two. So we should have two electrons on the outer ring. We do, one, two. Well, now we have to determine how many neutrons we have. Here we have the mass the mass is very close to four. Remember, when we add up the mass, we're adding up the weight or the mass of each one of the parts of an atom. So we have protons plus neutrons plus electrons. But remember, we said that electrons is so close to zero that we don't even count it. So I'm gonna put a big zero here. We know that we have two protons, but how many neutrons do we have if our mass is four? Hopefully you're telling me through your computer screen that we would have two. Okay, and yes, that is correct. We would have two neutrons and we see them here, right here and right here. Okay, so this is how we would count the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom based on what we see on the periodic table. All right, <clears throat> so now we'll look at something a little bit more hard. Here we have protons in blue, neutrons are in red, and electrons are in green. Now, if you look at the periodic table, you'll see that carbon has an atomic number of six. That means that it has six protons. 
And if you look at the periodic table, you'll see that the atomic mass of carbon is 12, or pretty close to 12. That's because we have six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus of a carbon atom. And that gives us a mass of 12. Now I'm gonna ask, why isn't it a mass of 18? Well, remember that the electrons have such little mass that we don't count it. So we will not be counting these six electrons when we calculate mass. We are only adding up the protons and the neutrons to find our mass, okay? Now, here's another kind of demonstration. Protons, six. Neutrons, six. That's a total of 12. We're not gonna add up the icky other things. Those electrons are not gonna be a part of that equation. Let's take a look at one that's a little bit more challenging. This is gold, okay? Gold has a proton um, amount of 79. We know this because it has an atomic number of 79. Atomic number right here, 79 which means you would have 79 protons in the nucleus. Now, in this model, they did not want to have to draw 79 little circles in here, so they just wrote 79 protons. Now, how many electrons does that mean? Also 79. Remember, protons and electrons are usually the same. It's a good assumption that they're gonna be the same, okay? So that's, if you count up all these little E's that are floating in these rings, you'll get 79. Now, why is neutrons 118? Well, let's look at the mass. We know the mass. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna round. We're gonna say it's 197, okay? 197. And remember, if protons and neutrons together make up the mass, we can use that total to find the number of neutrons. A total of 197 minus 79, remember, because that's the protons, will get you a total of 118 neutrons, okay? Neutrons, there you go. All right, so hopefully that's becoming a little bit more clear. We're gonna take another look and do a couple more practice problems here in this video, and then you'll be ready for your class. Okay, this is your star reference materials. This is the periodic table that I need you to get super, super familiar with. Okay, this is the one that you'll see on your star test. We're gonna be using it a lot in class. You can always Google a periodic table, but this is the one that I want you to use. Okay. Now, here we're gonna to try to name the element based on the atom that we see. So here I have the model of an atom. What is the name? First, let's determine how many protons we can see in the atom. Remember, protons are positively charged. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I see eleven protons. Okay. How many neutrons do I see? I'm gonna change the color here so we can count them better. I see one, two, three, four, five, uh, I think that's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. I see 11 neutrons. Okay, <clears throat> now, how many electrons? Hopefully it's 11. Hopefully it should match the number of protons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11. All right. So what is its atomic mass? Protons and neutrons together. Remember, we don't count electrons. We do not count electrons because they don't have enough mass for it to be significant. This is the mass. Protons and neutrons, we're looking at somewhere about 22. Okay? What is the name of this atom? Well, which element here has 11 as its atomic number and 22 as its mass? Sodium. So here we've determined which element it is based on its atom. Okay, we've got one more practice example for you. Let's talk about trying to draw the atom based on what element we know we have. So if we know we have silicone, let's try to draw that together. I'm going to start with a nucleus, and I'm going to start with protons in the nucleus. I have an atomic number of 14. That means that I have to have 14 um, in my uh, nucleus, 14 protons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so I have 14 protons. How many neutrons do we think I need to have? I'll give you a hint. My total of protons and neutrons is 28. So I'm going to take 28 and I'm going to minus subtract 14. What does that leave me? About 14. Okay, so I'm going to have 14 neutrons. Remember, neutrons are also in the nucleus. So they're going to be all mixed in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, I have officially drawn my nucleus. I'm going to highlight that in yellow just so we can see that this is the nucleus. All right. Nucleus is done. Now, I have um, still electrons to draw. So, I'm going to draw my first ring. How many electrons do I have? Probably 14, because remember, electrons always equal the number of protons. I have 14 protons. I'm going to have 14 electrons. So, I'm going to draw them now on my first ring. Here we go. One, two. Now remember, only two can fit on this first ring. Okay, I mentioned that earlier in this video. So two can fit there. I've got to draw another ring. Hopefully you remember that eight can fit on this next ring. Okay, so there's two. I'm going to start counting here. Three, four, five, Six, <clears throat> seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now I'm up to ten electrons drawn, two on the first ring, eight on the next ring. Now remember that that second ring is full. It can only fit eight. So I have to draw a third ring. Okay, I've drawn a total of ten electrons. I have four more. Ready? Here's number 11, 12, 
13, 14. This concludes our model of a silicone atom. We have 14 protons in the center. We marked those in purple. 14 neutrons in the center. We marked those in green. Together they make up our mass of 28. Protons and neutrons make up our mass of 28. Protons are the same as electrons. We have 14 electrons on the outer ring. Only two are on the rings. Only two can fit in the center ring and then eight can fit in the rings thereafter. Okay, this is the end of this lesson. I know it was a lot, so go ahead and um, review the notes as carefully as you can. Reach out if you have any questions. We're happy to help.